I'm sure more folks will continue to join us as they also uh, wake up on this wonderful Sunday after Thanksgiving. Uh, today is um, the last class, uh, at least for now, on our Truth and Reconciliation theme. If you can believe it or not, next week begins Advent. Um, so uh, a preemptive shout out to, to Lois and friends for helping us have some good classes around poetry this Advent. Um, we got Chris is home too. This is just wonderful. Chris is back. Um, oh yeah. Great. Yeah. So as we kind of start to, to wrap up, um, I, I have some things to share with us, but first I just wanted to see um, how these last 11 weeks have been for you all. Um, we've had ACE classes on a number of topics. We've I turned it off, honey. Some, some different things in um, worship. Uh, we've had some speakers, we've had some events. Um, and I'm curious, uh, what has come up for you all around truth and reconciliation? Still have a lot of work to do. That's fair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the world has a lot of work to do. It yeah. Also, you know, if only we practice truth and reconciliation all along, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be in the mess. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the, I like the prison one. That was good. That was a good one. Yeah. Would people uh, speaking mind shouting from the the seats because it's really hard for us to hear you? Yeah, that closing the doors really makes a difference, and also maybe moving the microphone closer to the people. I don't know if that if that would make a difference, but it's it is hard to hear by yeah. Zoom. All right. We are as far as it'll let me go, but if it's still a problem, let me know. We'll fix it. <laughs> yeah. One one thing you're asking over at all, um, it's we've been focusing on really big macro problems with uh, with clear victims and uh, perpetrators, and I'd be really interested in hearing a little discussion. I don't know what all you're going to be talking about today about cases where. There are people who feel on both sides that feel like victims um, and maybe not for such huge things, but with that have their feelings hurt or are deeply offended or insulted and um, and in, in personal relationships of people that they know. And um, that's a different thing because it's not clear that, oh, this perpetrator needs to acknowledge being a perpetrator and this victim needs to speak up about being a victim. But there's there's a little bit of both on both sides, and I'd really be curious to hear what you have to say about that. Absolutely, and I'm sure you're not the only one who who feels that we can find ourselves in those situations, perhaps more often than um, the very clear cut: this person was in the wrong, and these pre these people were hurt. Um, and that is a perfect segue, um, not even planned, to um, a prayer that I'd like to share with us um, as we kind of focus a little more this morning on the truth piece of truth and reconciliation. Um, but I have to say, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> uh, and I, again, hope I'm not the only one who can find myself there. Um, but I stumbled in some of my research for this fall on a prayer. Um, it's called the prayer before the prayer. Um, it was written by Desmond Tutu and his daughter. Um, and I thought it might be helpful for us, um, some things that we can ask for and pray for when we're not quite ready to admit where we've done wrong or um, you know, we just feel hurt and don't recognize some of our agency in the situations um, that cause harm. So I'd love to share this prayer with us and then um, dive in a little bit to the, the truth piece of truth and reconciliation. I want to be willing to let go, to forgive, but dare not ask for the will to forgive in case you give it to me and I am not ready. I am not ready for my heart to soften. I am not ready to be vulnerable again. Not yet ready to see that there is humanity in my tormentor's eyes. 
or that the one who hurt me may also have cried. I am not ready for the journey. I'm not yet interested in the path. I am at the prayer before the prayer of forgiveness. Grant me the will to want to forgive. Grant it to me not yet, but soon. Can I even form the words? Forgive me. Dare I even look? Do I dare to see the hurt I have caused? I can glimpse all the shattered pieces of that fragile thing. That soul trying to rise on the broken wings of hope. But only out of the corner of my eye. I'm afraid of it. And if I'm afraid to see, how can I not be afraid to say, forgive me? Is there a place where we can meet? You and me. The place in the middle where we straddle the lines, where you are right and I am right too. And both of us are wrong and wronged. Can we meet there? And look for the place where the path begins. The path that ends when we forgive. Amen. Amen. So we've talked a, a fair amount about um, reconciliation. Most of our classes this uh, the fall have started with reconciliation and something. Um, and when Dory was kind enough to be talking with me and planning this class, at one point she said, but I'm curious how you're going to navigate the truth piece. <laughs> um, and I said, I'm curious how I'm going to navigate that as well, um, because I don't think that uh, truth is is one specific thing that everyone has to understand in the same way. Um, but I think, hopefully, as we've heard some of these stories and, and started to ask some questions, um, that perhaps something has been opened up for us that more than one thing can be true at a time. Um, and I think being able to hear other people's truths whatever that might be, however frustrating that might be in the process, um, and then also having space for us to share our truth, whatever that might be, and however frustrating that might be, um, the more that we can all share and see one another, I think that helps us navigate what our collective truth together is going to be. Um, I really loved in this prayer, the, the balance of perhaps I can be right and you can be right too. <clears throat> that we can both be wrong and wronged. Um, and the more that we come to these situations that maybe are not as clear cut of these were the people who were the bad actors, these were the people who were hurt by this, but rather something in between since life is a little more complicated typically than these black and white situations. Um, I think that that is helpful to us. Um, that helps us see the other person, but also see ourselves and helps us to navigate. If I am honored sharing my truth, perhaps maybe I can be honored in needing to ask for forgiveness as well. Um, so I have a, a video here for us um, with a couple of caveats at the beginning. Um, I think the, the heart of what he is talking about is really helpful for us. Um, he's going to get into some political things, so this is not a political statement, um, but I think um, this guy who's done a lot of work on fake news and false news um, can help us to kind of navigate some of these big questions we might have. So I wanted to just kind of give that heads up as we jump into this uh, TED Talk here, um, and we'll we'll have some good discussion afterwards. Not say give. 
Yeah. I, I promise we're it. we're gonna get to um the good the good news. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> yeah, I see. everybody <laughs> think, you know we're yeah. all screwed. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, my father. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, so Katie and I yesterday were on a walk um taking our dog at the beach and out of nowhere she looked at me and she said what are we going to do if there's a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> zombie, okay. A zombie apocalypse. Um, and, you know, it could have been any sort of end of the world, to, you know, yeah, say, yeah. you know, the end of the world situations. Um, I said, well, my hope is that we would do our best to learn what's happening, right? We've seen enough films at this point of, you know, if you can't, see or if you can't hear or however these you know monsters or zombies or whatever they are function hopefully we will do our best to learn as much information as we can and figure out a reasonable plan from there uh, but without information i don't know what we would do <laughs> um, and katie said well how are we going to navigate what's true information or it might be true this moment and it might change again the next and of course our our minds went immediately to thinking about the pandemic and we did the best we could with the information we had and that information still today even is changing and shifting and expanding and i said once again we'll have to do the best we can with what we have at the time we have it um and i think that's a that's an underlying piece here of of what we're learning um, from this TED talk um, that that we are going to continually be challenged um, in his circumstance with fake news and false tweets and those kinds of things we have to navigate um, even if it means some of our you know trusted news sources that get hacked or things like that we have to be mindful. Um, but I also think um, one piece he missed that we have in our benefit um, is the definition of good news. Mm. Now, we have something that we gather together weekly, sometimes even more often than that, that holds us together. Um, and this is not an argument of capital T truth, Jesus is the one and only way, <laughs> not, not that kind of truth. Um, but rather the, the truth at the heart of the stories that we share every single week in worship. The truth of the benefit of being together in community and being able to mutually discern what is true and what is good. Um, I think we have to be mindful of our propensity for, what was it, disgust and surprise. When we are people of anticipation, joy, and trust. Right, that's the news that we have to share that maybe isn't bursting through headlines. <laughs> but that is so much more stable, so much more trustworthy than any kind of surprising or disgusting short story that we could share here together as a community as well. Um, so I'm curious, uh, you know, I have some other recommendations sort of like his recommendations at the end of the video there but i'm curious what's uh what's coming up for you thinking in context of perhaps this video or how we navigate what is true for us um what what might be coming up for you well, you know i'd like to just see your last statement here on the uh the church side <clears throat> and a willingness for us to be here this morning was that we wanted to be here uh, and we were ready to receive. And I think this is something that uh, uh, it goes back to this purpose, hope, and love that, that comes into it. But this receiving or uh, conflicting people with thoughts. So I, I just think for me, all of this artificial intelligence, there's a lot of fear mm -hmm. because. You just don't know what to, even if it is true, if you become a victim of a scam because of it, your first reaction is that fear. Uh, so I think our general society is so fearful of, you know, the older we get, I think this idea of all this intelligence that's going to happen or is in the process, 
uh, we want to receive, but we don't even know where to go on the, next, the first step. So receiving is a uh, a key part for me, and that's part of my kids. <clears throat> that, that I want to be here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, well, I was just thinking about um, fake news, right? You're talking about fake news, but you know, it's like so many people believe that fake news, and it could be a church, mm -hmm. matter of fact, you know, mm -hmm. and and if it affects elections, how would you ever have a fair election? Could, and they say, well, it goes by the votes, but whatever people are convinced of the fake news, and there's more people believing that than there is the love and hope that we're trying to do. You know, it's a I mean, there's a lot of fear in there. I'm not saying there's not hope, but mm -hmm. there's the answer of should we be regulating AI as some of the inventors of it are saying, yes, you do, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. But that might not help either. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, of course, my brain in this context is very much church focused and theology yeah. focused. That's that's a truth that guides my life. Um, but there are many times that I have been misled by those places as well. Right. Yeah. That this, yeah. you know, we can all immediately with the shaking of heads know some of the things that we were taught. There's a church down in Puyallup that is telling people how to vote and might lose their tax exempt the status news. yeah, because they're telling people how to vote and they're refusing to stop. If that is your church home, that's really confusing. Um, well, it, yeah, especially if, you know, there's a church, this theology is totally different than another church's, you know, what they think the truth is. That's, that's the hardest part is theology is turned into a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. It's just like QAnon, you know. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's crazy, but some people think QAnon is the greatest, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that's where I think some of this idea of of verifying from different sources comes yeah. comes to benefit us. Um, <clears throat> not that that's going to weed out potential for scams or bad information and those kinds of yeah. things, but that we can come together. Um, and I think Newport, maybe this is selfish, but I think Newport does a great job of this, um, that we share good news that is inclusive for all people. We continue to grow and change and what that looks like and, and how we welcome folks here. <clears throat> and the stories that come from that affirm the goodness and the truth of what we're doing here. Um, and if we, if and when we learn that we're not doing something well, I hope and I pray and I trust that we will change what we're doing and adjust what our concept of truth is so that everyone is still welcome and pursuing that concept of love no matter what. Um, and the, the more that we can do those things together, um, I, I think that helps us to, to affirm truth, not confirmation bias. But instead, you know, the freedom that we all feel knowing that we are welcome in this worship space encourages us to invite others into this worship space. And then we read stories of scripture where Jesus is welcoming folks into worship spaces. Um, I think we have to be mindful of, of kind of how that works and not, well, I was excluded because of X, Y, Z thing. And now I'm going to exclude others because of this thing. Uh, kind of working towards that um, that goal of love and inclusion, which mm. is our truth. Um, yeah, Lois. Um, you know, it it occurs to me the other thing too is that you know a lot of people who believe in conspiracy theories and 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 whatever they spend so much time on the internet because they are looking for connection they are looking to figure out the world and they are looking to connect to other people. And so another thing we can do, you know, as a church and individuals <laughs> is just reach out and connect to people and not correct them. <laughs> um, but just uh, that build that sense of community with people who are very different from us. Um, and, you know, kind of an exchange of 
of, of of selves, you know, reaching out to other people, not judging them. Um, and that is a form of truth. Um, even if you don't agree with someone's position, you can treat them as a human being. And I think that's what we're lacking. That's why I think fake news is so can spread so easily because people are trying to connect. They're really trying to connect. And, you know, QAnon is a good example, but just anything. People are trying to connect and they don't know how with this new, <laughs> new, new to the older generation, but this new method of communication on the internet. Absolutely, right? When we can keep digging and figure out some of those roots like you're talking about, Lois, um, that, that how well does this hold up to scrutiny? Um, how well can we discern, you know, and I think even in our own personal examples, you know, I can tell you whatever story I want with my relationship with this person and you will believe me and take my side. And then you meet the other person and you say, man, I have a, a few questions about that. <laughs> um, or even if I portrayed it that I was trying to love them. And so this is what I told them and it hurt their feelings. Um, perhaps there's still just a better way that I can explain my truth to them that might be a little more uh, gracious and well received. You know, there's there's so many um, intricacies, which I think is what helps me in the conversation of truth is that we have to be flexible <laughs> to grow as our understanding grows. Um, and so that's why I'm very hesitant of things that say this is right or you know, folks, I'm going to vote this way no matter what happens when that might change, right? Look at our Republican Party, not necessarily the same Republican Party or Democratic Party or insert these things as it used to be. Um, so we might be hesitant to make these uh, kind of sweeping announcements of what is right and what is wrong um, because our understanding might change as well. And I think that that helps us um, to continue to pay attention to that as we learn more. Um, I kept thinking a lot about um, the COVID vaccine uh, and the beginning, you know, the pandemic and how much we forgot how the scientific method works. <laughs> they, you know, scientists and researchers, the people making the vaccines were learning as we were learning also. Well, that's how science works. Yeah. Right? That's how science like, works. It keeps, uh, <laughs> because science keeps discovering more and more. I mean, that's why our vaccinations keep changing. They discover more and more. I mean, they can't just discover things overnight. Right. And that was one of the, oh, well, I can't even go into the yeah, science it's thing. It's a right? It's a system it's, that we already it, have. Yeah. yeah, but people just stop believing. Some people stop believing it. It's just like, to me, the pandemic was a pandemic. It was a health problem. Mm -hmm. But it turned into something else, and I'm like always shocked when somebody says something to me about it, and I just go, "Oh, okay." And I'm like, "That's not how I saw science, but yeah." And sometimes you don't say anything because you don't either want to hurt their feelings, or you know, you're not going to convince them of anything else. Yeah, and perhaps that's our the most gracious thing we can do, like Lois said, to come alongside them in yeah. whatever their truth is right now. Yeah be you know firm and confident in the things that we know to be true and find that middle ground just enough so that we can understand one another and hopefully keep one another safe um, is particularly fascinating um during the pandemic i you know first started in new jersey um, and then we moved to indiana and if you want to talk about culture shift <laughs> And shock, um, you know, we went from a place where most folks didn't leave their house if they didn't have to, and they wore masks and right. all those sorts of things. And we go to Indiana, and it's like life is completely normal. And you're like, what? what? Right. <laughs> and yeah. so the way in which to engage in that circumstance, you know, how can we be consistent with the things that we know to be true? Katie's friends out here in Seattle, where things were spreading so quickly, and, and friends, doctors, all those kinds of things were we're so struggling and then we're in Indiana where it's not happening. Um, yeah, to, to meet people where they are. Yeah, Mary. Well, all you need to go is you could live in King County or Pierce County. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like New Jersey to Indiana. Very similar. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But you're talking about what we know and what we have together and the and the the pro the process of learning together and living together and correcting and helping each other 
is a group thing, but we also is, exist as individuals, mm -hmm. which is the hard part. Sure. And it's the hard part, whether it's a part of your family or a part of a, a, a neighborhood or news that comes in and you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. There's a that we're very alone as individuals who try to figure out what is and what is. And it's really tempting to shut it all out in my case, because mm -hmm. then I don't have to try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and I don't know that that's always wise. What what am I missing? Yeah. But it's um uh, it is there that fear is that's my fear. Mm -hmm. But a whole lot of what goes on with that is is fear based, which is the common, more common emotion than it ever used to be in the world. Yeah. And that's what these what the the, the uh, falsifiers prey on mm -hmm. is fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So when you let fear get in the way. Then, then, uh, or, or the fear be the basis of choice. It's really hard to make. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, Chris. Um, so think about what I'm saying because I'm busy listening. Um, uh, truth is a complicated thing, as we all know, <laughs> and um, and we were having a just. Uh, Dave's brother had a birthday, and they were discussing family stories, and and of course there were different memories of those family yeah. stories and the truth in those stories you know and they're going really yeah, you were the one that got stuck yeah. in the dryer That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. stories and and so it's all it's very complicated and I know that when we when I've watched a lot of things about fake news or read about things that the best thing we can do is to stop and think and you know pause and not react not share not you know mm -hmm. react and and I think church gives us that pause mm -hmm. it is a place where we can pause and think and also I think if we, if the truth always you know after the election <clears throat> I get the years mixed up, but I was talking to someone who was not unhappy that Hillary did not get elected, and um, and they were talking about truth and uh, on the news, and word choice is very is one of those slippery slopes where truth gets twisted mm -hmm. or turned, you know, and and that's people saying facts, but you would choose to say it was a superb day instead of a nice day, or I, you know, everything gets twisted and stuff. Um, but if we, to go back to you, um, go back to what our values are, and that's where church centers us again, I think then truth is easier to sort out because you can measure it against something. How does that mm -hmm. measure against, um, anyway, I think it helps. I think it helps, but it's it's not easy. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that posture in and of itself is helpful to us, that we're not coming at it saying there is one only truth, and we have to pursue that relentlessly and not let anything alter our interpretations of that. Mm -hmm. But to under just come at it saying this is complicated and I want to pause, mm -hmm. helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is complicated and I want to learn as much as I can helpful. Um, and I think even in theology, it's it's very similar. Um, and so my recommendations, um, similar to um, from our video here, that we share what we know to be true. We cannot be afraid to share our truth because it's, this is important. This is life-saving stuff, life-sustaining stuff. Um, so we have to share what we know to be true. Uh, number two, we don't need to be afraid, let fear uh, drive us um, in being labeled by what we know to be true. I am happy when folks know Newport and say, oh, yeah, the ones that love the gay stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point, right? Like this welcome and inclusion are part of our identity. And for folks to label us as such makes M makes my life so much better. Um, and so we don't need to be afraid to be labeled by the things that we trust and that we claim because we trust and we claim them. Yeah. Um, number three, I think we need to admit when we don't know for sure, right? A lot of this also gets further complicated when we are making statements as fact, when we're not entirely sure 
what's going on. And so even to approach it with a posture of curiosity helps us um, and maybe will not confuse someone else who hears us saying things with confidence. I'm great at this. I, I can answer what you are asking, whether or not I know the answer. <laughs> uh, but I have learned it is more beneficial for me to say, and I have no clue if that's right. <laughs> um, and, and I think that is beneficial for all of us, kind of that built-in humility and flexibility. And then I think we also need to constantly learn and teach others how to learn as well, right? Another thing that I think Newport does really well, um, that when I make a reference to a book or a person or a video, I will normally get at least three emails of someone saying, will you remind me of that Greek word from that documentary we had watched? Will you like send me a book list? I want to learn more about this topic. Um, you know, I think that was what was really neat to me about our classes on uh, reconciliation and native land and people, as well as um, around incarceration. We didn't have just one week where this is, these are all of the facts, all of this contained in a 50 minute segment mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can go back and watch again on YouTube. Um, but rather, we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to take different angles from it. Um, and I think that that applies in our life of faith, that we will continue to learn and grow. Um, and I think that works with whatever other things we're facing in our life as well. If we can approach a personal conflict with curiosity and maybe even just being open to the fact that I'm not the only one who is right in this situation, I think there's more ground for us to meet one another um, <clears throat> rather than well, I know this is true and you're wrong, so you need to ask for forgiveness. Um, and so I, I think uh, there's a lot of grace, there's a lot of patience and a lot of flexibility. Um, there's times where we can do that well, and there are times where we really cannot. Um, and so another encouragement here is, is to not jump too quickly that like Chris was saying, we can pause. Um, uh, I have a friend who will not send an angry email uh, within 24 hours of something that's happened. He'll wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. And see if you still feel the same way in 24 hours, shoot that off and see how it goes. <laughs> but chances are you might even change just one of those words in that email mm -hmm. uh, because it, you understand yourself better and your emotions better. Um, and I think really the, the, the big heart of it for me is, is remembering why we're doing this, right? We love because we were loved first. Um, we include others because we were changed by the radical inclusion that we have experienced. Um, and so the more that our truth comes out of these kind of collective things, and I'm not the only one who's here because I love this space and I feel included here. Um, I, I think the the more that this concept of truth and goodness um, is infectious in the in the good way. Um, so those are those are my brief and, and probably incomplete thoughts on truth. Um, and honestly, the the more I have learned and the the more stories I've read and experienced this fall, I have way more questions than answers. Yes. Um, but I also want to, and I'll say this in, in our sermon here in a bit as well, um, this is not the end of all of our talk and work around truth and reconciliation, uh, just because we are starting a new season next week and, and doing some different things. Um, and I want to encourage you, just like the weird scam emails that somehow come from someone looking like Pastor Kelly, um, you know, yeah. always check, reach out, ask questions. You all have my phone number and you know you can reach out to Peggy in the office um not only just for scams but for other questions that come up or or things that you discover that are meaningful or helpful for you um the, the most important thing is that we cannot do this alone yeah. we were not designed to do this alone and I think our our life is better um filled with more anticipation joy and trust when we do this together um, feel free, I know that it, it's always 
a fun time when I leave these um, and have to duck out a few minutes early. Please feel free to, to stay and chat for a few more minutes as we prepare to shift to worship. But thank you all for your time and attention this morning and, and this fall, asking some really big questions and getting very few actual answers. <laughs> thank you so much.